Good morning and welcome back to the Vicarage Study for the third Sunday of Easter. Today our Gospel reading tells us one of the most important stories of the Christian faith, the story of the road to Emmaus and the way in which Jesus made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 25. Now on that same day, the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking to each other about the things that had happened. When they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still and looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place over these days? He asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and his people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him but we had hoped that he had been the one to redeem all Israel. Yes, and besides all these things, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women in our group astonished us. They went to the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Some of them who were with us, went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe, all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he vanished out of their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he was talking to us on the road, when he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord is risen indeed, he's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. May my words and our thoughts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he made himself known to them in the breaking of the bread. Words from the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In a book, the way in which the author tells the end of the story is very important. The last few pages of the final chapter often give clues to what the author was getting at throughout the story, what they really wanted to say. Because usually, the end of a book is an artificial cut-off in the life of the characters, whether they be real or fiction. If the book has been well written, we can imagine the characters continuing to live their lives beyond the end of the last page. The last page is a goodbye to these characters from the author and the reader, a message 
about how they are to be remembered beyond the closure of the dust jacket. Today we meet Jesus and the disciples at that point, on the last page of the book. Not the whole Bible, of course, the stories continue well into that, but the last page of the Gospel of Luke. Luke has told us his story, all 24 chapters of it, and this is what he chooses to tell us just before the very end. One of the final images he gives us is the road to Emmaus, and it's extremely well chosen. The road to Emmaus has reverberated down the years as one of the central images of the Christian faith. The disciples on the road to Emmaus are walking with Jesus. They've spent a lot of time with him almost the whole day, walking together, talking together, and it's now near the end of the day. And it's not until they are gathered in the house, seeing Jesus do something so familiar to them, that they suddenly realise who he is when he makes himself known to them in the breaking of the bread. Jesus meets the disciples at a very low point in their lives. This is not only the road to Emmaus, it's the road from Jerusalem. The disciples are leaving the city where it's all happened. They're retreating, returning to their homes. They've given up. And it's at this point that Jesus meets them. The road to Emmaus is such a powerful image in the Christian faith because that experience has echoed down the years in the lives of Christians from that day to this. Jesus meeting us on the road, in the middle of whatever it is we're doing, making self, himself known to us in surprising ways. Sometimes when I'm walking from one place to another, perhaps through the village or walking to the shops, I imagine that he's walking with me, wondering what he would say to me, what I would say to him. There's something very particular about a walk together and perhaps some, perhaps some of us have been going on more walks than we usually do recently as one of our only ways of getting exercise. A conversation on a walk is not the same as a conversation sitting in an armchair. The shared experience of the passing scenery, the opportunity for pauses and times of silence in which no one picks up a book or fiddles with a phone but you just share the silence together. As Jesus walks with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, so he walks with us through our lives, sharing our experiences, being a listening ear and a guide. There are many Christian images of journeys. The most famous one perhaps is John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, where Pil uh, Christian and hopeful battle through many trials and tribulations in the journey from their hometown, the city of destruction or the world, to the celestial city or the world that is to come. And it's through the experiences gained on the journey that Christian is finally ready to enter the gates of the celestial city when he arrives. Another epic tale is C.S. Lewis's Narnia Chronicles, where the children, Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucy, lost in Jutlania, rely on the images of Aslan the Lion, who represents Christ, to show them the way. The journey is a helpful image of the Christian faith, because we never know what's round the corner, what will meet us round the next bend in the path. Journeys have times when the path is open and clear and times when it's covered with weeds and brambles. Times when we reach crossroads and wonder which way to go next. The message from the Gospel story is that no matter which road we choose, choose to take, Jesus accompanies, accompanies us on the way and meets the challenges there with us. The story from Luke 24 has particular resonances for Christians at the moment, especially for churches like St Mary's for whom the Eucharist, Holy Communion, is particularly important. Jesus makes himself known to us in the breaking of the bread. And from that day to this, 
Christians have broken bread together and shared wine as a sign of our fellowship with Christ and our sharing together as his body. This is now the sixth Sunday when we've been unable to do that, unable to meet in church and share the bread and wine together, share the Eucharist. And that's painful for all of us in different ways. We're so much looking forward to a time when we can all come together again. In the meantime, perhaps the road to Emmaus can give us comfort and wisdom. Like on any journey, we don't know what's round the corner. We certainly none of us saw this coming. But Jesus didn't meet his disciples in church. He met them on the road. He met them where they were, on their journey. He didn't wait for them to come and find him. He went to find them. And so it is with us. He is with each of us in our homes as we go through the round of tasks, the cleaning, the tidying, the washing up on our journeys of life. He's our comfort and our guide. When we pray for him, when we pray to him, he listens and responds. And so as we meet Jesus and the disciples near the very end of Luke's story, Luke is telling us one of the most important things that we need to know about Jesus and his love for us. That Jesus meets us wherever we are on the road of life. He comes to meet us in the ordinary and the everyday. He makes himself known to us in our homes, at our kitchen tables, so that we may know that we are never alone. Amen.